And now uh, this is my house and you see this is the settlement over me here and the guy who are living there over me exactly he called Baruch Marzel as I mentioned to you there from Kah movement or Kahana movement as you know in the States. Now they changed their name and they called themselves Jewish Defense League. You see now his wife she's over us. She called Sarah Marzel and she is also a very phonetic woman really here. Mm -hmm. uh, those settlers used to, to attack us seriously. They used to throw stones, garbage, empty bottles to us. As you see here, all of these garbage from them. And that old washing machine, you see, they thrown it to me uh, when I went to clean it from there. It's a secret between me and it, otherwise it killed me. The career. They closed all of our access, first of all, to our houses and my my original access from here, this is the stairs and it's closed with barbed reservoir and garbage. And those settlers used to come here in our yards and uh, really uh, attacked us seriously. Uh, the most incredible thing which happened that one of the settlers uh, with 50 women, really, she came here. That woman she called the Bachelor Malkopi. You will see her now in the video. She catch my nephew, she put a stone in his mouth and she smashed his teeth with the stone. She destroyed all of his teeth, his upper teeth now. This is the guy, this is the guy and just only yesterday he injured from them. Also they came here during the day and they cut all of our fruit trees as you see from here. From that all of our trees cut it and you can appear from here also. All of it they cut it. but. Another thing which happened from those, that woman also, Eva Chalom al she came with a lot of girls and women. Uh, they knew already that I am one of the activists. I always organize the tours to come here to see the situation, even though we are talking with Israeli peace activists also, like Breaking the Silence, Sons of Abraham, Peace Now, uh, Beit Salem, and all of them really, we have a good contact with them. Uh, she came here and in front of my window and she said to me, Hashem, look, you have a good task that you could manage to invite a lot of Israelis, a lot of internationals to come to your house to see how you are suffering from us as the settlers, but never mind, this time I came with the girls, next time I will come with the guys, I will let them rape your wife, kill your children and then kill you. As I mentioned, the curfew was imposed completely here and during that it was the independent day of Israel. Uh, it was an opportunity for them to celebrate by their own, by attacking all of the Palestinians' houses. This is what happened in the year 2003 during the curfew. All of us were in our houses. They came and entered the houses of, uh, with the protection of the soldiers and they destroyed everything in it. And they hit us, kicked us, all of us injured as the Palestinians from them in that time. <coughs> that guy, Baruch Marzel, he threatened us several times. He threatened me several times and one of my colleagues, he called Isa Amro, we are threatened from them to kill. Baruch Marzel knew already that we are an activist. He said to me once a time, I will kill you. Move from here. Your house is your land, the promise from God to us. If you want to live peacefully, so drive now to Egypt, to Jordan, whereas you can go to Iraq or Saudi Arabia. Your house is your land, the promise from God to us. During that, when he said to me, I have a tour from Belgium, they came here and soldiers obliged us to remove what written here from a graffiti as the Arabs kill all of the Arabs. Then I shouted to him, he shouted and I shouted to him, please, if you want to open the discussion now, open it now. Uh, it, is it the promise from God to you as written in the Holy Bible? I believe in the Holy Bible. But did you read, read it well? It's written in the Holy Bible, 7% of the Palestinians' lands on to the Jews 3,000 years ago. I want to ask you questions. Who owned the rest of the land? He didn't manage to answer. He said, I said, I said to him, okay, let this question away. I want to answer you another question. I want to ask you another question. Uh, why the Lord didn't give Jesus this promise of, for all of the, the lands of the Palestinians, for all over the world also, and the, the Christian faith? Jesus is the son of the Lord and he's, he's Palestinian. He born in, in Bethlehem and his mother from Nitzra. Why the Lord didn't give him this promise or this authority? Or the Lord just only for you as a Jews? Answer me now. He said to me, you are crazy. Once a day I will kill you. 
I said to him, okay, because I defeated you, but you, ca you can kill me, right? You said you can kill me, but you will never kill my thought. You will never kill those people, those activists who used to come here to my house. They will never let my house free, empty. They will never let my children alone. You see in the corner there, it is Beit Hadassah, which we saw it near Kurtuba school, and this is great leads to it also. It's now completely closed after the settlers came and confiscated all of the houses and uh, the offices here of the Palestinians, even the shops also here. Uh, really, they saw us in the last groups with the, with the cameras here over us. They saw us talking about it because they have monitors and they hear everything of the Palestinians. Those shops, it was opened, the career remember, and even Sophie remember that it was, these shops was opened from the settlers. This is used to be as a pharmacy, and the settlers came and they steal all of the medications from it. And this shop, it used to be as a, a factory of shoes, also storing everything in it, and confiscated all of these. And they closed the street for security reasons, as you see from wall and the reservoir. This house over us here, as you see, uh, it was Palestinians, and the settlers came several times. This is in the year 19, uh, nine, uh, 1977. They planted several times in the, when the Palestinians inside it in order to, fear, to force them to leave. But the settlers, the, the, the uh, Palestinians, they didn't move. After that, they burned it another time and another time. So they're afraid for their lives and for they're afraid from their, the lives of their children. So they decided to move it from here. It's, this, it's still free and the settlers used it as the house which we saw it near Kurtuba. Now you can see this is the back of Beit Hadassah which we saw it also from Kurtuba. And you see here we put the protection as an activist with coordination of the municipality and the uh, rehabilitation committee in order to protect the Palestinians who used to pass through that street, this street, from the harassments of the settlers. As you see they used to throw stones, empty bottles, rocks to here. Nowadays, they used to throw dirty water. When I mean dirty water, it's urine. And the Palestinians, just only recently, they put this protection also to protect themselves from the dirty water. And you can see the checkpoints also over us here. This is, out of the check this is one checkpoint and this is another checkpoint here. And the, the Palestinians' house is here, it's empty because the soldiers forced them to leave from here. Now you can see this is the, the shops. It's the shops it used to be the uh, the main jewelry market in Hebron and there is another shop from the, the street there. We will see it from there. But you see the centers are from everything here. And the, the shops is not allowed to the orders to open it because they want to clear everything in front of them. It's the, the only Palestinian house resist here, even though it's surrounded from the, the settlements by Hadassah. That's the, the main colony and this is the, the expanded areas from here over them and really the settlers used to come here and attack them seriously they burned the house several times and as an activist now what we done we used to come to them weekly and uh, talk to them and uh, try to support them be resist still strong and we are with you and so that they're still here and they exist even with the escalations of the settlers. Uh, that's really a Shuhada street again, as you see. And that's the houses which you saw it from Kurtuba, from the school there, where the man shouted to us also there. That's the place. 
and you see it was just only two or three minutes walking from the center of the city it's closed for them so they have to go alternative ways these shops are also the main jewelry market of Hebron and this place which I mentioned it to you it was Osama Ben Munkadi school it's now Yeshiva school for them which learn just only to run. Uh, what incredible thing that the settlers sometimes open this gate the soldiers opened this gate and with the protection of them they let the settlers come in here and made a lot of excavations because the Palestinians here to let them move, to let them to clear everything. This place, uh, it was a Palestinian clinic and the, the soldiers came and confiscated it in order to clear everything from them. Now this, the soldiers used it also as drug center and another thing for them, you see, uh, it's empty completely. Uh, some of the masks receive it for their interests.